The trailers for this show have been medium. And I got the screeners like way in advance. I think because they know there's so much content these days, especially for something that's a multiple episode watch, they try to get it out to press as early as possible so that we have time to watch it. And I sat on them for, I'd say, a little over a week. And then late one night, I was like, I need something short to watch. Each episode is about, uh, it's about 45 minutes actually. And I was like, okay, I'll, 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 I'll give this a whirl. I loved it so much, I watched all three straight through. It was, I just couldn't turn it off. And I was like, they only gave me three! Because yes, this show is not gonna be bingeable either. Uh, it's gonna be uh, like The Boys, uh, first three episodes, and then it'll switch to weekly. Uh, it's incredible. I mean, it, it, you have to watch the whole first episode. Because when it started, I was like, does the world really need another superhero project? But then by the end of the first episode, it doesn't even take three. It just takes one. They could have just released the first episode. In fact, it's so good. They didn't have to release the first three this Friday. But at the end of the first episode, and don't turn it off early. It's a bit of an end credit sequence. You think the show's over. And then something happens. And by the end of it, I was like, oh yeah, the world needs this show. It's amazing. I think... I think people don't know this is coming, and I'm excited for people to find out that it's here when it debuts on Friday. Invincible, like the boys, is on Amazon Video. Amazon has a bit of a hard time sometimes getting the word out about their stuff. They still don't register as a streaming service, perhaps because they're not just a streaming service. As I always like to say, uh, if you like free two-day shipping, then you too can watch all this content. I mean, it's an an add-on, really, to something else. So, but boy, do they have the content, especially when it comes to the superhero space. They're really carving out a distinct niche. Real world, ultra-violent, twisted takes on familiar tropes, which are my favorite, so I particularly enjoy it. Now, speaking of the boys, for some reason, Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg, who produced the boys, and Seth Rogen does a voice here, are still developing an Invincible movie. And Robert Kirkman, who created The Walking Dead and Invincible, and is behind this animated series, he's actually intimately involved in it. He's not just, you know, giving it his blessing. He says, Kirkman says, he sees no reason that a live action movie in this animated series can't compete in the same space. I mean, I guess that's true, they could, but I gotta tell you, the live action movie doesn't have a chance in hell of competing with this animated show. This animated mo- this animated show is so good. I mean, the level of action, expansive world building, and violence, I don't think you could even do it in a live action movie, quite frankly, at least not with this show to lay the groundwork and say, see how popular it is? I mean, I don't know if a studio would have the stomach to let them do what they do here, you know, in a movie, because they try to make those four quadrants. Uh, A movie, really, to spend the kind of money you would need to make this, that's the other reason, it's just too expensive to do in live action, they try to have it have four quadrant appeal, which is why nobody can ever take any really big risks. Like Joker um, was a, a very cheap movie to make, which is why they were able to do the things that they did. So I don't know if you could make Invincible in live action. It's probably one of the reasons it's taken so long for the movie to get off the ground and why Robert Kirkman decided to do it as an animated series. Thank God he did, because it's so good. I mean, even The Boys is held back by budgetary restraints. I mean, they go as far as they can. That, I mean, that show is amazing. But Invincible goes, like, goes, even, goes so much further. It's incredible. One of the coolest things about Invincible is that right off the bat, you get an MCU-sized universe for the show to play in. I'm gonna do it, okay, get ready. I haven't seen an adult animated show this good on multiple levels that can compete with live action, action, you know, stories with fighting and action sequences since Avatar. Again, as I said, that's right, I'm going for the comparison, I'm making it, and I think it's also interesting that Avatar couldn't expand to live action either. And now Viacom is finally letting it continue on in animation, which is how it is meant to be. Also, let's be honest, would Hollywood, a big studio, even today, which is sad, but would it today even have the guts to cast Steven Yeun as the lead in a, in a big blockbuster superhero action movie and Sandra Oh as his mother? I think we're on the cusp of a studio saying yes to that. And you know what helps? Shows like this, where Steven Yeun voices the character and also Yoon's Oscar nomination. Uh, again, even though I didn't personally care for Minari from 
a filmmaking perspective, I think what the movie's accomplishing is incredible and should be applauded. And I'm so happy for Steven Yeun. I would really like him to be able to play Invincible in a live action movie someday. It would be amazing. And he more than proves that he can do it here. I mean, one of the coolest things about this show is that the entire voice cast, for the most part, could play their characters in live action. Yes, Invincible is so good. I don't want a live action version that competes with it. I want this to be made into live action. And also like Avatar, I don't want them to retell the story. I want them to expand it and tell a new chapter. Uh, it's, it's very similar to Avatar in many ways, you know, not just in quality, uh, but also it's behind the scenes drama, which I find really, really interesting. Now, an, uh, Avatar has, has found a way, so I hope that Invincible will too. And again, it's worth noting that Kirkman himself is a driving force behind this show creatively, as is his comic book company Skybound, and Image Comics is involved, that published Invincible, as well as Walking Dead, by the way. And watching Invincible, is like reading an image comic. They actually recreated that. And it's phenomenal. I love it when Marvel movies feel like I'm reading a Marvel comic. I love it when DC stuff feels like I'm reading a DC comic. And it's so great to see Image, which had, you know, Image has kind of faded away a little bit, which is sad. But Image also carved out a very distinct space for itself in the comic book marketplace. And to see that captured in Hollywood, or, you know, in, in movies and TV, it's just so exciting. I mean, now give a saga and Nowhere Men. Nowhere Men was so good. A little similar to Umbrella Academy, actually. Um, but, you know, this type of content. I love it. So good. Uh, this also reminds me the, uh, of the importance of the Avatar, Avatar creative team and letting them do their thing instead of trying to bend them to the will of Hollywood. I mean, I think that's fantastic. I was having recently a discussion with someone about, you know, bringing in new creative voices who also think differently into Hollywood. And of course it creates clashes, but, you know, I, Hollywood creates so much content and there's an even bigger demand for content now because of streaming services. Why can't people exist in their own spaces and let the marketplace decide, you know, let green light one season and see how it goes. Um, I mean, people loved Avatar. I don't think Avatar needed to be fixed. And I, it, when they tried to, it was a disaster. And I think people are going to really love Invincible. Uh, Yoon and O oh are both excellent, as are J.K. Simmons, Walton Goggins, Jillian Jacobs, Zazie Beetz, Jason Manzukis is hilarious, and uh, Zachary Quinto. Uh, I think it was just, again, a phenomenal show. It, it's perfect. It's, it's better than perfect because I couldn't imagine anything this good. Again, as I said, I was given the first three episodes in advance to review, and all of them, all three of them will hit uh, Amazon video this Friday before the show switches to weekly release, which means it's going up against Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which they actually tweeted. They were very nice about it, but I think Falcon and Winter Soldier, they had a hard time debuting opposite the Snyder Cut, and I think this show is going to also you know, siphon away conversation from Falcon and Winter Soldier on Fridays because Invincible is just that good. And I think more importantly, it's just that fresh. Uh, and also it's just, it's bigger. You know, uh, they're saving the big stuff in the MCU for the movies, Kevin Feige has said. But Invincible's putting it all on the table and it is glorious. Now on that note, there are tons of twists and turns in the story. Lots of surprises, especially if you aren't familiar with the comics and few people are with, when it comes to Invincible. So I highly recommend that you go in blind. And if you are familiar with the comic, don't be a jerk and ruin it for anybody. It's really fun to see this sh the show moves at a very brisk pace. So let people enjoy those discoveries. I think Invincible again will be as big a hit as The Boys and as big a hit as Avatar. I, I, well, Avatar had three seasons, but you know, and then it expanded onto Korra. But yeah, I think this is all really great stuff. And I think it's going to become, I think Amazon overall will become very competitive in the comic book marketplace and hopefully someday get some recognition for it. <laughs> and I hope that, as I said, someday Steven Yoon gets to play Invincible in a live action movie with this creative team behind the camera. Uh, really, and Jeff Allen, by the way, who comes from a lot of more traditional superhero animation, he directed this, all of the episodes, and he just really did a phenomenal job. He deserves credit as well. So that's my review of Invincible. I can't wait for you to see it so that we can finally start talking spoilers, and I believe we'll be talking about the show quite a bit. I'm so happy, particularly for Steven Yeun, you know, he, who, by the way, debuted on Walking Dead. That's his big breakout role and there was some concern that he'd never find another opportunity but he stuck with it he did the oscar film minari and he got a nomination for it uh chadwick boseman's going to win um posthumously as he should 
Uh, and now he has this animated show and, you know, he, he was willing to do an animated show. And, you know, a lot of actors would say, you know, because if they're not voice actors traditionally, they'd say, well, I don't want to be it if I'm not going to be seen. Stephen Yoon is very smart to do this. It was the same, you know, Margot Robbie made that mistake. She turned down the Harley Quinn animated series and now she has to compete with fans loving Kelly Cuoco's version this, the same amount or if not more than Margot Robbie's. Uh, so I hope that Stephen Yoon, this, I hope that this, his decision to voice the character here pays off as well as his decision to star in Minari, a small little indie film. I'm so excited. All right, share your own thoughts down below. Don't ruin the story points. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.